So one of my most recent uploads, four months ago, sorry, was a video called Gaming is Looking Fun Again. It was a kind of loosely scripted rundown of a few lesser known upcoming games I had discovered at that time that really caught my attention and that I wanted to share with you because I love you. Well now, after uploading that Skyrim video which took 10 years to make only for no one to watch it, I've somehow picked up the pieces and I'm back again to just casually talk about some upcoming games because gaming is looking fun again. With Gamescom having happened recently and the YouTube algorithm finally learning to show me games instead of ducks devouring peas, I've seen some pretty cool stuff over the last few days that I absolutely have to talk about. In this series, I guess, I only show you stuff I personally think really stands out. I don't cover all upcoming releases in all genres, and of course, I don't talk about the big AAA games everyone knows about. If you've watched any of my videos, you pretty much know exactly what gets me moist. So expect to see some good, cool shit in here to get you excited about games. That's what we do. These are in no particular order, but I do have one game on here that I'm crazy excited about, which I'll talk about last. Just to keep the suspense going, you know, luckily YouTube doesn't yet have the functionality to let you just skip to any part of the video you want, so you'll just have to watch the entire thing to see my favorite upcoming game. Spoiler alert, of course it's that one. So let's start it off with possibly the most video gamey name I've ever heard in my life. Forsaken Realms Exodus Rising. No, those are not four random words put together by a video game name generator, it's a real upcoming project. I want to move on to the actual game, but I want you to know that I'm fighting every urge in my body to not spend this whole segment talking about the name. So I always mention how I think the medieval aesthetic is boring and overused, but that doesn't necessarily mean I don't like it. I don't like a game that's just another medieval fantasy game, but I do think the setting can look quite cozy and be atmospheric if done right. And if all we had were games that did it right, I'd probably never get bored of it. Exodus Rising is a small indie project, so I don't expect too much, but I do like what I've seen in their devlogs. It's still early on in development, but I think it is one to keep a loose eye on. I like when devs are transparent with their development and post regular updates, and when you can sort of follow the game as it grows and expands into the finished product. We get about one update per month for Exodus, and I'll definitely be keeping up with those. Sometimes though, the game changes into something you don't necessarily enjoy over the course of development, so I can't really say how I feel about it yet, especially considering we don't really know much about it at this point. For now, I I think what we've seen of the atmosphere has some of those lonely, desolate vibes that I always go on about, but that might be because the world is just literally not filled with stuff yet, so we'll see. Now the last game that I enjoyed keeping up with in this way was Dead Matter, and to put it in the mildest way possible, that turned out to be a disaster in every way imaginable. Which is why I'm glad to say that Exodus Rising is hopefully staying far far away from multiplayer. I think this is where most things go wrong, and for an inexperienced indie studio to make their first game multiplayer is kind of a big red flag for me. Exodus is a story-driven action RPG, and I hope it stays that, and only that. Next up, a few games that Xbox showed just briefly in their latest conference, and I mean briefly. Yes, the same show that spent 10 whole hours talking about the history of aviation gave these three games about a second of showtime each, although to be fair it was only to announce that they're coming to Game Pass day one. First off, Signalis. This is for sure a very unique looking one. It's a classic survival horror in a sci-fi setting. It has this weirdly good looking 3D pixel art style, not much to say about the game yet, but the trailer seemed quite dark and serious, which is something I didn't realize I was missing until I saw it. Like not a hint of silliness or comedy, just straight up pure depression. The gameplay reminds me of Silent Hill at moments, and although I usually kind of despise space things with all of my heart and soul, I couldn't help but be drawn into the atmosphere. It definitely seems like more of a psychological horror than just the jump scare one. There looks to be a lot of suspense and mystery here, and I'm all for it. Of course, this doesn't necessarily come through with the stock EDM montage song Xbox was using over it. Yeah, yeah, 
it. So if you really want to check the vibe this game is going for, just look up the trailer on your own. Midnight Fight Express is a 3D isometric beat-em-up game developed by a single polished dude and it just looks like pure fun. Plain and simple, get in there and beat up bad guys type of fun. I was really impressed by the trailer for this one. It's silly, it's quirky, it's over the top and the gameplay looks, once again, simple and fun. The one minute trailer showed like 5,000 different locations and it's honestly hard to believe this was all done by a single man. There seems to be so much personality in everything here from the characters and setting to the animations and humor. Mm. Doesn't something like this immediately scream local co-op to you? It'd be a giant waste of potential if this game didn't support local co-op, which it doesn't yet say that it does on Steam, but I guess we'll see when it comes out in summer 2022 on all platforms. Yes, all of them. Finally, we have my favorite of the three, Chinatown Detective Agency. I'm just a huge sucker for mystery and detective stories. Pair that with a futuristic cyberpunk setting and some pretty pixel art and you got my money. This game is set in 2032 Singapore, which is not a place a lot of games take you. There's a lot of gameplay for this one out already and I don't think this will be everyone's cup of tea because it looks kind of slow paced and story driven. But for me personally, it's been a while since I've played something like this and I kind of miss it. I used to play a lot of point and click games as a kid. I don't even know where the fuck I used to find them, but there's a special place in my heart for this genre, so I'm looking forward to giving this a try. Okay, most of you probably know about Black Myth Wukong. Some of you have maybe even seen the full video I did on it a year ago, but they dropped the gameplay trailer of the year recently, and I cannot not talk about it. Yes, the game is made by an indie studio, but the first trailer they put out exploded for all the right reasons, so I'd say there's a pretty decent amount of hype around the game now. Black Myth has everything I look for in a game like this. It's based on Journey to the West, so it's full of traditional Chinese mythology and folklore. It's visually, I mean, Look at it. Not only does it have the crispest graphics I've ever seen, but the character and environment designs look so good. The enemies are creative and diverse, and combat looks challenging. There's tons of cool moves, transformations, it looks snappy and responsive. There's epic boss battles, the combat overall being very reminiscent of Sekiro, which is pretty much the best compliment I can give to a game's combat. Hell, even the music is banging. This is a game that I can not wait to come out. This little montage at the end of the video is just uh, it's so cool man. I can't describe it in any other way. It's just insanely cool. There's so much variety and everything. This is probably one of my top three most anticipated games at this point. Before I go all out hyping it non-stop on my channel though, I want to see what it actually looks like as the finished product. This game is coming out on old and new gen hardware as well as PC and I can tell you right away, this is not gonna look how it does in the trailers on your PS4 or Xbox One. As for new gen hardware, I don't know. The hardware is here but most games out for it right now are from that transitional phase and don't really make full use of next gen potential. Wukong seems to fall under the same category being that it's releasing on old gen as well so I can't say whether it gets a downgrade or not when it releases in 2023. However, I think I'm probably going to be very surprised when we do actually get deeper into that next gen era of games. More and more projects are coming out with these amazing looking gameplay trailers to which my my initial reaction is, hmm, but I mean they can't all be lying, right? Eastward is a pixel art game that I've had on my radar for the longest time and it's finally coming out in just a few days, if I manage to get this video out on time, on September the 16th. I think it's one of the most anticipated pixel art games right now, although I'm not sure how much weight that carries as there's about 15 people total in the pixel art fandom. The reason I like this game is that it gives me that old school cozy vibe. A lot of games try to go for that. They're like how do we exploit the feeling of nostalgia to get people to buy our shit? BAM pixel art. But not a lot of them are successful in actually capturing that feeling you used to get playing Pokemon on your Game Boy. Eastward has a very nice looking atmosphere. It looks like something you could spend days playing. I haven't quite felt that same feeling of wonder in a top down pixel art game since Google's Olympics doodle like two weeks ago, but I'm always down to get lost in a big pretty pixelated world with lots of stuff to do. Eastward is an action-adventure RPG where you play with two characters, 
main things you do are explore, solve puzzles, and slap enemies with a frying pan. Sounds good enough for me. The main thing I'm looking forward to is seeing if the world is captivating and interesting to traverse. I'm only now realizing that three of the six games I talked about so far are pixel art, but don't worry because daddy's got more. I want to briefly mention two more pixel art games that I have on my radar called Replaced that you're looking at right now and Anno Mutationum. And what these both have in common is that you could describe them using the exact same words that you could use to describe the last night. That's all I'm saying. When the trailer for Replaced dropped a couple months ago during E3, my video about the last night started getting an influx of views from people who thought it was the same game, because whenever YouTube decides to recommend any of my videos, it's always one of the stupid boring ones I made two years ago that don't represent my channel at all, so I'm not the only one who thinks they took some inspiration. And this kind of makes it more interesting to talk about both of these games, the fact that they take inspiration from The Last Night, which is basically a little more than a concept description written on a napkin. In case you don't know, it's a game that only has one trailer from 2017 that got a lot of attention for simply looking amazing. It's still in development, but honestly, ain't nobody got the patience to wait for Tim Surrey to methodically craft an innovative philosophical audiovisual experience. People want a 3D but 2D pixel art game with shaky camera movement and dramatic lighting now, and replace devs just went and did it. I don't care what other game they look like, I want to play both of these. Replaced got way more attention being that it was featured at both E3 and Gamescom and to be honest it seems more cinematic and polished, but I also really like how Anno Mutationum looks and it deserves a lot more attention than it has. Not as shaky and particly, but it has that distinct 2.5D style that we haven't seen a lot of. It has what looks like a very pretty cyberpunk world, I mean what else do you need? Many people didn't get the cyberpunk experience they were expecting with 2077, so I think there's still a void to fill in the market for these dense neon cities. It is, of course, much harder to create a convincing atmospheric world like this in full realistic 3D graphics, but that doesn't mean that a 2.5D pixel art world can't capture the same essence and mood with a smaller budget. I personally am mostly looking forward to both of these because I haven't yet had that proper gritty underground cyberpunk experience. Boys, girls, what is DOKV? What is this game? This really just came out of nowhere to become the highlight of Gamescom? Where do I begin? I don't even know how to approach talking about this pure, raw insanity. One thing I know for sure is that there's plenty of material in this one trailer for a full video, so if this one hits, I don't know, 150 likes, I'll make a separate video going into all the details and all info we have about the project so far, and if it doesn't hit 150 likes, I'll still make that video because this is my channel and I do what I want. When this trailer started off, it immediately looked different. Different to anything else we've seen. I thought it would be some sort of school life simulator where you hang out with friends and do fun activities in this very vibrant looking coastal town and honestly I was all for it. But then we start getting these rocket boosts on the skateboard and rollerblades. Okay, not full on realism, a bit of creative freedom. Oh, we're flying through the sky and there's robots and creatures spawning out of nowhere and you fight with a giant toy hammer. It's that kind of game. Everything about this gameplay trailer is full of character. It's so vibrant, colorful, there's all these particles flying around everywhere and I love it. This is apparently a Pokemon type of creature collecting game, but the setting is just so unique. We don't really get games set in smaller towns like this. The South Korean studio Pearl Abyss wanted to make a game that can be enjoyed by both adults and kids. The studio is known for their MMO game Black Desert, and I actually mentioned them in the previous Gaming is Looking Fun Again video when I was talking about their upcoming game Crimson Desert. Like that game, Doke V was also conceptualized as an MMO, but thankfully they also changed direction with it, and it's now a single player open world action adventure. I really cannot get into it. MMOs, so I'm always very happy to hear this. Single player with co-op elements seems to be the perfect choice for this type of game, although we don't yet know if there's any co-op involved, but their other MMO turned single player game can be played in its entirety in co-op, so I assume this is the same way. The graphics look bonkers, and I said the same about Crimson Desert, being very skeptical about if the final product will actually look that good. 
and the studio to my surprise commented on the video reassuring me that they're doing their best to make it look good. Thanks studio, I just felt like flexing about the fact that my tiny channel got some attention. The trailer for V has over 7 million views already and it's so obvious what type of stuff people want. I mean, I sit here and make video essays guessing and pretending to know why studios just don't make the stuff that people ask for, but at the end of the day, I have no idea. It's obvious what type of stuff gets amazing reactions, but the studios never seem to deliver. I guess we'll see if that changes anytime soon. Thank you for watching, like, subscribe, share. Mm -hmm.